Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football through the first four games of the 2024 season. Who have been the 10 best players on this Miami Hurricanes roster? And I'm just going to start with this. For the Miami Hurricane fans, one, the amount of support y'all continue to show to the boys has been amazing. It's been a blast talking this program. But much more importantly, let it fly in the comments section. I left so many legitimate players that you'll find on the all ACC teams at the end of the year off this list. And I think it just highlights how loaded this roster is and how good this roster has been playing through the first couple of games of 2024. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel again, much more importantly, let it fly with some players. I left off the list in the comments section and without further ado, Let's get into this one. I think it starts pretty obviously. Cam Ward, I think he's been the best quarterback in the country. I think, quite frankly, he, he's been the best player in the country. And if you were to ask me if this season were to end today, who would be my pick for the Heisman Trophy? I think Cam Ward would probably be my answer. 11 big-time throws to only two turnover-worthy plays. That's been the biggest stride that you've seen Cam Ward make. And you look at all the reasons Cam Ward decided to come back to college for one more year. I think, one, he wants to win at a high level. Obviously, Miami is doing that. But I think more importantly, the one kind of bugaboo for Cam Ward during his time at Washington State was uh, we know he can make the high-level throws. The arm talent that this kid has, it's kind of on another level. That being said, he was loose with the football at times. The turnovers have been a problem. The way Cam Ward has been able to balance making those big-time throws, which is one of the best marks in the country, but also limiting the turnover-worthy plays to only two, like it doesn't really get much better than that. You look at the two interceptions he has all year, one bad decision early in the Florida game, number two just hit Jacoby George right in the chest, pops up, goes to a USF defender. Cam Ward has been phenomenal. Leads the country in passing touchdowns, is second in, is in, in passing yards. And I think the, the most impressive stat when you look at Cam Ward is what he's doing, pushing the ball down the field, completing 56% of his passes, 20 plus yards down the field. There are a lot of quarterbacks in the country that don't even have a 56% completion percentage, period. Cam Ward's doing that 20 plus yards down the field. The best player on this Miami Hurricanes roster through the first four games. Going to number two, and let's go to his wide receiver one, Xavier Restrepo. The Miami Hurricane fans who've been rocking with the boys going back to the summer months know this is not only one of my favorite players on the roster, but one of my favorite players across all of college football. Criminally underrated. Left off all American teams. Left off kind of that conversation of who are some of the best wide receivers in the country. I think you're seeing Xavier Restrepo show that, but I think – more importantly than any of that, we've known Xavier Restrepo has been a really good wide receiver for Miami. To me, throughout the first four games, I think he's taken a step in terms of his all-around game. Because you start looking at the numbers and saying 18.1 yards per catch, he's bringing a little bit more of an explosive element to this, to his wide receiver game that we didn't really see in 2023. Hey, we know he gets open. We know he catches every single football that hits his hand. Wasn't necessarily the most explosive receiver. He is <clears throat> doing really well after the catch. They're asking him to work vertically down the field more. His average depth of targets 13 yards in 2024. You're seeing Xavier Restrepo not only continue to be what I think was one of the most reliable wide receivers in all of the country, but you're seeing him add that explosive element to his pass catching game that really just makes him one of the best receivers in the country. Going to number three, Tyler Barron. Look, in the absence of Ruben Bain, look who's stepping up in terms of that elite pass rusher. It's been Tyler Barron. You take a look at the numbers, seven and a half TFLs, four and a half sacks, a 16 and a half percent pass rush win rate. Tyler Barron's not only been one of the better pass rushers, that we see in all of the country, but take a look at what he does against the run as well. Six run stops, second on the team, an average depth of target or average depth of tackle, excuse me, in the run game of negative 0.7 yards down the field. One of the things that I love about this Miami Hurricanes defensive line is that not only are they really good pass rushers, but they're also really good against the run. Like they are good at taking on blocks, keeping their outside shoulder free, getting off blocks and making plays. 
that's an element of an edge rusher that not a lot of people like to talk about. You just like to talk about the sacks and the pass rush win rates, which certainly matters. But you talk to take a look at the guys that really change games. They're really good against the run. Like go back to Jared Verse at Florida State last year. Go back to Ruben Bain last year as well. How good he was against the run. The best edge rushers are able to play the run at a high level too. Tyler Barron has been that for Miami. And you just start to think about like what this defensive line, this pass rush looks like when Ruben Bain gets back. It's going to be freaky for Miami. Going to number four, Francis Maui. No, this has been a kind of an underrated storyline, right? A lot of the conversation goes to a guy like Cam Ward. Francis Maui Noah throughout the first four games has emerged as one of the best tackles in the country. You look at the PFF numbers, top 10 pass protection grade in the country. But I think more importantly, it lines up with the film. Like you take a look at Francis on the film and say, doesn't look like a freshman anymore. Like we knew he had the elite physical traits to be one of the best tackles in the country. You saw some of the true freshman growing pains in 2023 you don't really see those growing pains in 2024. One, I think he's reshaped his body a little bit. I think the body composition's a little bit better. I think he's a little bit more powerful and athletic at that tackle spot in the run game. He's physically imposing. This Miami Hurricanes offensive line has been really, really good. Francis Maui Noah has taken a massive step in the right direction to start 2024, going to number five and probably the biggest surprise on the list. Like if you would have told me some of these names would be in the top five, I probably wouldn't have been that surprised. If you would have told me Isaiah Horton would make the top five, I probably would have been surprised. Now the Miami Hurricane fans, again, who've been rocking with the boys know Isaiah Horton was a guy that we were really excited about in terms of what we heard from spring practice and what we heard from fall camp. We kind of just haven't really seen it consistently on the field. Two things that stand out to me about Isaiah Horton. One, He's another wide receiver similar to Xavier Restrepo, who's added a lot of other dimensions to his game. I think a lot of us assumed he'd just be that vertical threat in this Miami Hurricanes passing attack, which he has been at times for Miami, but he's also been a much more well-rounded wide receiver. I think my favorite stat when you look at Isaiah Horton is an 80% completion percentage when targeted. Like When Cam Ward goes to Isaiah Horton, Good things are happening, and good things are happening consistently. He's really good in the red zone. You can see he's filled out that frame and has added that physicality aspect to his pass-catching game. Uh, Xavier Restrepo, Isaiah Horton, Cam Ward, that trio is looking quite special for the Miami Hurricanes to start 2024. Going to another transfer portal edition, let's talk about Simeon Barrow Jr., What I want to talk about with him is, yeah, he's been an elite pass rusher. We kind of knew he'd be that, right? Three sacks, 14.5% pass rush win rate. Very similar numbers in terms of what we saw from Simeon Barrow at Michigan State. But once again, kind of the same conversation we have with Tyler Barron. Simeon Barrow has been really, really good against the run too. And that's something that was probably the biggest weakness that Simeon Barrow had coming into Miami. You're seeing him play the run better. You look at the recipe for Miami, like we're going to stop the run first and second down, then we're going to get after you with our pass rush. That's kind of been what we've seen from this defense over the first couple of weeks. Simeon Barrow taking that step as a run defender for Miami has been absolutely massive for this defense. Going to another kind of surprise name and a guy that's sneaky, like you look at the box score and say, one, he's he's third and third on the team in receiving yards behind Isaiah Horton and Xavier Restrepo. But for Miami fans, like this is this has got to be the name you're most excited about in terms of seeing him as a top 10 player for the Miami Hurricanes. Elijah Royal, we all knew was special, but he never seemed to kind of get back to form after that injury. I think it's fair to say that Elijah Royal has got back to form. He looks a little bit different. Talk about a matchup nightmare. Like there's just not many defenders that can deal with the physical frame, but also the athleticism and speed that he has. Take a look at the numbers, nine targets, nine receptions. So a hundred percent completion percentage when Cam Ward has gone to Elijah Royal for 184 yards, averaging 20 yards per catch. He's giving Miami kind of that explosive element at that tight end position that, we were all banging the table for heading into 2024. You look at all the different ways that Miami can get after you in the passing attack. We knew their wide receivers were good. 
We wanted to see the tight ends take a step, specifically work in that middle of the field. Elijah Arroyo has done that for Miami. Massive storyline for this Hurricanes team. Going to the next name on the list, and this is where it gets, I think, quite debatable. Damian Martinez has been good. Like I, I, We kind of knew what we were getting in Damian Martinez in terms of a bruising running back that's going to attack the line of scrimmage. Not going to be necessarily the most explosive running back, but he's going to be a running back that kind of keeps you on schedule. Jordan Lyle has emerged as that explosive back for the Miami Hurricanes. And I probably would project that he gets more and more work. He's going to get most of, most of his work kind of not in garbage time, but kind of when the games are kind of getting wrapped up. Every time this kid touches the football, good things happen. You take a look at the numbers, 29 carries, 233 yards. He's averaging eight yards per carry. Five runs have gone for 10 plus six missed tackles forced on less than 30 attempts. Those are some special numbers. And again, what I think is so massive for Jordan Lyle is you have your Damian Martinez and Mark Fletcher, your, your battering Ram kind of backs, the physicality that they run with you love. We were kind of saying, which is going to be the running back that kind of provides the explosiveness in this Miami Hurricanes running back room. A lot of us thought it'd be Chris Johnson, who's been solid in his own right. Jordan Lyle has kind of emerged as that that running back that when there's space created, when you block him up clean to the second level, he's going to take it not only for 10 yards, but he's going to take it for 40 plus and, and kind of hit an explosive play. I, I think the, the, the exciting conversation for Miami fans is I think he's going to continue to kind of get a little bit more of a workload as the season goes on. I think it's important to remind ourselves that Jordan Lyle wasn't here for spring practice, like he enrolled in summer impressed the staff during workouts, continued to impress the staff during fall camp. I didn't think we'd see a ton of Jordan Lyle just because of how deep the Miami Hurricanes running back room was. And he's making it so hard for this Miami Hurricanes team not to give him at least five to 10 touches a game because when he gets those touches, this kid can change the football game with a snap of your fingers. Going to number nine, this is not a surprise. Probably could be higher to a nice Cooper. Like, no, ain't no one going to talk about Inez Cooper that much, but he is just so solid. He's been so solid for Miami for so long. You take a look at Inez Cooper, 124 pass pro opportunities, only one quarterback pressure. Like, death taxes, Inez Cooper being just a solid, solid offensive lineman for Miami. You can say that for a lot of guys. Probably say the same thing for Zach Carpenter at center. You could say the same thing for Jalen Rivers at the tackle spot, although he's not on the list because he hasn't played a ton for Miami uh, so far. Offensive line's been really, really good, specifically in pass protection. Maybe you want to see them get it going a little bit more in the run game. But again, I, Miami Miami's running the ball just fine. They're top 20 in the country in terms of yards per carry. They're just not going to the run game that often because of how good the passing attack has been. Number 10 on the list. Let's go to one of the best players on this Miami Hurricanes team, Francisco Maui Noah, at that linebacker spot. Probably could have gone to the, probably could have, should have gone to the NFL. Dream. Not should have, because he's obviously a part of a team that can do something special in 2024. Very well could have gone to the NFL. Leads the team in tackles, leads the team in run stops, averaged up to tackle at 1.9 yards down the field, doing the things that we saw him do last year. Really, really good pass rusher, plays downhill, the leader of this Miami Hurricanes defense. You want to see the missed tackles maybe go down a little bit, which I don't think is all too rare early in the season for guys that might not have been participating in spring and fall to maybe struggle with some missed tackles early. I am fully confident that he cleans that up, but he's still leading the team in run stops and tackles, getting his hands on footballs and coverage, checking a lot of boxes. Now we got to add some honorable mentions, right? Akeem Mesidor, I think has been really good for Miami. Elijah Alston. Really good for Miami. Michelle Powell probably should have made the list. Now I'm sitting here thinking about it. Probably should have figured out a way to get Michelle Powell on this list. I think Wesley bassain has been really good. I think what's so exciting for Miami is that we just went through 10 players that are for sure going to be on all ACC teams at the end of the year. There's probably another 5 to 10 that should be on this list that we just don't have enough room to get them on. I think that tells you how complete, how deep this Miami Hurricanes team is. For the Miami Hurricane fans, I left a lot of good players that probably deserve to be on this list, off the list. Would love to hear from you guys in the comments section. Again, all the support means the absolute world. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to you all 
Later.